Hi you guys, it's Chanel. Thanks for joining me here back on my channel for my second YouTube video on here. <laughs> um, so on this video, I'll just be talking about my last midwifery appointment and I'll be sharing a few of my personal tips on just boosting fertility and what I think things that I did after I had my miscarriage and a lot of it well we'll get there so let's get started so at my last midwife appointment I was actually 15 weeks as of Saturday February uh, what is this May 7 I am 15 weeks yay that's so exciting so supposedly the baby's the size of an orange about this big that's pretty big i think so that's pretty big so just hanging out in my uterus my uterus has pretty much grown over my pelvic bone now and yeah it's it, it's going well so i was also able to hear the baby's heartbeat that was exciting. Oh, that makes it so real. And baby has a strong heartbeat, beating really quickly, about 170 beats per minute. So that seems good. And I'm all healthy. Everything's good. Blood work came back great. I didn't have any blood issues, no anemia. No diabetes, no hypoglycemia or anything like that that would, you know, just give me any issues later on just the further I get along. So I'm really excited about that because after getting so sick, I really thought something was wrong with me, honestly. <laughs> I was so scared. I was like, oh my goodness, what's wrong? So... No, I was just being pregnant and having morning sickness and my body was getting adjusted. And it's interesting because the first time I got pregnant, I had actually had, um, I guess, an allergy attack. So that's how that happened. But this time, I got really sick. And they say all pregnancies are different, even within the mother with her baby. So... Yes, that's what I experienced, and I had to, well, I lost a lot of weight. I don't know if I mentioned that in the last video. I lost a lot of weight. I was only 83 pounds when I went to my first doctor's appointment, and this doctor's appointment, I only gained three pounds, so I'm supposedly 86 pounds, but I feel like I've gained about a pound and a half since my doctor's appointment. So that's good. I'm going to go get me a scale this week so I can start keeping track of that because I just want to make sure that the food I'm nourishing myself with is putting on the proper weight. I don't want to be eating too less or just not eating enough of something that can be adding extra healthy pounds to me, you know, because I'm already a really small girl before I got pregnant. I was only about probably 95 pounds, but... And the, the highest weight I've ever been at, it's been about 102. And that's when, that was before I changed my diet and was eating a lot of fast food uh, all the time. All the time. I would eat cooked food when my mom would cook, but that's when I was home. And that's just another story. So, anyways, moving forward... I had a healthy, healthy results at the midwives and everything was good there. So just a few tips as far as what I did to increase my fertility. I, I took different steps. They weren't really intentional steps. At first they began to be intentional, but eventually I really let all that go. I didn't want to, I no longer wanted to be in the state of you know, oh, I'm doing this so I can get pregnant because 
I believe that part of that was blocking just my flow of creative energy, my flow of just living life, you know, being so consumed with this one thing all the time, like, oh, I'm doing this for this, and, you know, don't get me wrong, it's great to uh, take care of yourself, to benefit you in a specific way, but I wasn't unhealthy to the point where I needed to be so focused on doing these things in order to accomplish this one thing you know if anything was blocking me from making this happen it was just being so hell-bent on trying to make it happen you know so the first thing I can recommend is foods a uh, few foods things like maca powder these things help increase fertility, maca powder, Sasha Inchi powder. You can find these things online at Amazon. I'll put a link down below uh, in the description box so you can go find them at Amazon. That's probably the cheapest places you'll find them. Everywhere else, you can go to your nearest health food store, Whole Foods, Sprouts, Kirkland's. I don't know where you are. Wherever you are, uh, your mom and pop health food stores, those places as well. Increasing the amount of greens you eat, that's very important. Just so you can have a, a clean and healthy blood flow. You know, have increasing the amount of oxygen you put into your body. Movement is important, whether it's just walking, going to the mall and shopping, because that's being active as well, you know, is... It's not as uh, focused as walking because when you're walking, you're paying more attention to the speed that you're walking, your breath, and things of that nature. But just getting out and being active and things like that and communicating with people around you, you know, whether it's friends, whether it's family, whether it's your mate, you know, just having an active and healthy relationship with these people. Is really important community that's important focus on the community that you have and be happy and connective with them that makes a difference to your being and it really gives you it, it decreases the amount of stress that you deal with and that's what's really most important the amount of stress that we deal with in our lives uh, for example are we sleeping you know, are we resting properly? Are we sleeping throughout the night? That's very important. That's important to uh, rejuvenating our body systems and allowing our body functions to properly reset themselves to function the next day. You know, so that's important. Another way besides eating greens to um, increase your oxygen, I mentioned walking, but also doing exercises such as yoga, doing things like martial arts, tai chi, you know, swimming, playing tennis, anything that you like to do actively, find that whether it's hiking, it doesn't have to be anything in specific, it's just what makes you feel good, what keeps you the stress down, what do you do to feel, you know, at peace, find that place make space for that that's really important whether it's making space in your mind because a lot of the times we have a lot of things going on in our heads that's not real we kind of go on tangents and make up things that really don't belong to us you know and it's important to let those things go whether it's what somebody thinks about us um how we're feeling about our own selves you know uh what it is that we feel like or feeling like we need to be a specific person for somebody or the world you know needing to change who it is that we already are we only need to be ourselves and be that at the, in the best way or fashion that it is that we can be it you know there's we can only do what's with what's available to us you know what i'm saying as far as doing your best 
you don't have to go out and buy things to make it better. We always have everything that we already need. And if we can uh, be in that state of mind, it makes life so much stress-free. And it opens up a, a greater reality to that everything is already here, you know? And it makes everything possible. Uh, it makes anything possible. Everything is already right here, you know? So, uh, another thing is letting go of the idea of getting pregnant. What? Letting go of the idea of getting pregnant. You know, so, okay, I had this miscarriage back in January, right? And after having this miscarriage, I was really hell-bent on thinking that something was wrong with me, that I was doing something wrong, you know, that I was unhealthy in some kind of way or whatever the case is, because at the time I was working a lot and my job was really active. I was a personal shopper and I was having a lot of orders a day and I was going and coming and going and coming. And yes, I was still getting up in the morning, eating foods, having lunch, but I was stopping to get food. Um, I would come home and I would cook, you know, it was a lot happening at one time. Then I was moving and, um, I was stressed out because of the living situation that I was in. I, I was unhappy in the living situation that I was in. Let me say that I wasn't stressed out. It was just, I was annoyed. So a lot of these things could have played a factor for sure. But at the same time, women have miscarriages all the time. And unfortunately, that's become a norm in our society in this day and age. So, of course, now we can take better steps to uh, preventing that, of course. But at the same time, when this does happen, that doesn't mean that something's wrong with us or that we did something wrong. And I had to get past that or that we're infertile or that we can't carry a baby unless we go to a doctor, have a fertility specialist tell us these things. And yes, it's important to not beat ourselves up about it, to keep living our lives, you know, to remain in the state that that's State, that space of peace that I was talking about, that state of, you know, where your happiness is, you know, not being stressed out about needing things to go one particular way. Because sometimes what way we want something to go is not, it's not always that. And Sometimes there are other things that we have to correct or not necessarily correct, but refine for ourselves uh, in order to manifest whatever it is that we're trying to create in our realities or bring forth in our realities. And only within acknowledging ourselves and really taking the time to, like I said, make that space can we find these things and get to these things and be open to these things? Because if you're continuously always concerned about one thing in reality, you're blocking it. You're not, there's no space for it. There's no, you're not open to it. You're, you want it to come. You have tunnel vision. It's a very narrow perspective and you're not seeing the forest for the trees. You're stuck on a, branch on one tree and there's so much more to it than just that you know and that's very important to recognize and to accept in our lives just whether it's about pregnancy or getting a job you know so yes these things to me these are the things that I changed for myself um I also did do a detox before I had, um, before I became pregnant and 
I was just doing this detox because the season was changing. It wasn't, I was ready to switch up my diet a little bit, clean it up a little bit because I have been uh, eating out a lot and I didn't want to eat out as much anymore. I didn't want those extra foods to be lingering in my body and you know I was just gonna get back to cooking more again and because I mean I pretty much cook two times a day most time I cook like three times a day and that's because I have the time to and if I didn't um, I would probably still be eating food majority of the time because when I cook I have leftovers and I eat those the next day so that's important to me everybody should find out what's important to them because when we know that then okay we're grounded in who it is that we are and we can move forward to where it is that we're going you know it's not about what's important to somebody else or what somebody else is telling us is supposed to be important because in reality we're all having different experiences we're all going through life with different perspectives none of us see anything the same way and i mean some of us we agree on things you know we see things similarly but we're not seeing it in the exact same light because one we've been raised differently we all have had different upbringings and within those upbringings we either take those with us or we leave them be and when we leave them be we begin to take on things that we learn and even those things aren't ours because they are learned they are not innate coming from within intuitive you know so it's all about you and it's important to never forget that that it's all about you and when you remember that putting yourself first allows you to give yourself give more of yourself to others then that really does make life and flowing through it a lot easier because you can't give anybody anything with just a portion of yourself with just I mean you can give it to them but then later you're gonna be expecting something from them and nobody likes receiving anything from someone who's going to want something in return. Like you're either doing something out of love or you just shouldn't be doing it at all, you know? And that's just my personal opinion. So I hope that this video has given you something useful. Oh, wait. And let me go back to foods really quickly because aside from the maca powder and the Sasha Inchi powder, you can also add things into your diet, like um, coconuts, um, co Thai coconuts, coconut meat, coconut water, the raw, real stuff, not the stuff you get in the can off the shelves. I mean, don't get me wrong, that's a good alternative to drink aside from fruit juices and stuff for sure. But if we're talking about boosting things and health and cleaning out the body, you want the good stuff and that's the raw stuff and it's, it's good having a salad a day you know and also knowing what raw foods your body can break down because not everybody body's body is equipped to break down raw foods especially if they're not chewed down good it's really important for us to chew our foods some people need to chew their foods more than others like me in general but it's good for us all to chew our foods because that causes stress on our digestive system. And when the digestive system is unhappy, everything else is unhappy. When the liver is unhappy, everything else is, un is unhappy. If you really love somebody, tell them you love them with all your liver. <laughs> because that is what is keeping your body in its proper healthy state of function and keeping everything flowing and filtered out properly. Um, oh, and one last thing, cleaning out the bowels. So I said I did the detox, right? Sure. But getting colonics and doing enemas are really beneficial to the body because 
cleaning out the large intestine uh, makes space to allow the rest of the digestive system to clean itself out because sometimes our large intestines can get backed up and cause bloating and big bellies and lots of gas and lots of digestion and you know we see a lot of people around walking around looking like they have these big pregnant bellies and in reality it's just gas and in a backed up colon and that can be very toxic to the body because it eventually starts to flow through the bloodstream anything that's not coming out eventually is flowing through the bloodstream and here is how we create disease and how the body becomes toxic the body toxic our body has um everyday functioning uh detoxification processes that's going on you know so you don't have to be doing cleanses all the time and doing uh detoxes all the time if you're taking care of your body and you're eating well for you then your proper detox function should be working just fine and you will know when they are because you'll feel good you'll have enough energy and all of these things the body only begins to build up build up toxicity when we're not taking care of our bodies so colonics and enemas can be very important if you have any questions on any of these things, you want any further elaboration on any of the topics that I've mentioned, send me an email. And we can talk. It's whatever. I'll put it down in the description box below and I'll share with you what I know. So thank you for joining me on this video. And yes. Uh, if you like this video, you know, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, all that good stuff, and I will talk to you guys soon. Alright, thanks.